Today we are taking another crack at trying TikTok crochet hacks. If you didn't see the first video in this series, I will put a link down in the description so you can check that out if you're interested. Before we get into things here, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you who recommended or even sent me crochet hacks to try. Because there were quite a few, I've decided to break this series down by social media platform. Today we'll be doing TikTok hacks again, but at some point in the future we might do Instagram reel hacks, Pinterest hacks, or even YouTube hacks. You know, we'll just, we'll see how this plays out. I also want to take the time to thank those of you who either explained interesting little facts about some of the hacks in the comments or those who explained where I went wrong in some of them. That color change one, I think it was hack five or six, I don't quite remember, but I could have sworn that you went through the front post, but apparently you did not. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to revisit my failed hacks at some point. Will I bugger up that badly again today? I suppose there's only one way to find out. I was just setting up here, getting everything ready, but there's something else I want to address before we get started. I wasn't going to initially, but I do think it's important, so I will. On the first video, there seemed to be a small minority of people who seemed to have an issue with the fact that I left the mistakes that I made in. There's a couple of things I want to say regarding that, but I'd like to preface it by saying that like no one is under any obligation to like or watch any of my content or any other content for that matter. Our preferences when it comes to the media that we consume are pretty subjective. And if you don't like seeing mistakes in videos, fair enough, that's your preference. However, when it comes to this specific type of video that I make, where I am attempting new things, I am going to make mistakes and I'm not going to hide that because personally, I feel it would be very disingenuous if I did that. It does not matter if you've been crocheting for days or decades, you will make mistakes, especially when you're trying something new. Mistakes happen, and that's okay. Okay, that's it, mini rant over. Sorry for the delay, and I'm not trying to be a dick here. I hope you can appreciate where I'm coming from, but this attitude where mistakes are something that need to be hidden away, it kind of bothers me. In the right context, maybe that's true. For example, when I'm making one of my patterns or tutorials, I want to keep the mistakes to a minimum because I'm trying to teach someone how to do something and having in a whole bunch of mistakes is going to confuse them. But in this context where I am trying new things, as I said, mistakes will happen. I'm not gonna pretend otherwise. Mini, mini ran over, <laughs> let's, let's go on to hack number one. I think I've got everything I need. Well, that puts a bit of a wrench in my plans. Uh, I don't think I'll be doing TikTok hacks today because my sister just pulled up with my nephews and my niece. And I can tell you from experience that things don't get filmed around here when there are kids about. So I'm going to stop here for now and I will pick up again in the next few days. Fortunately, it'll only be a few seconds for you guys. And we're back. Well, I'm back. You guys probably haven't been anywhere, but we're going to dive straight into the first hack. No more wasting time, except to say that like in the previous video, I will be putting the names of all these creators and the hacks that they made down in the description. So if you like them, you can go and check them out. All right, hack one, let's go. I came up with this brilliant yarn winder hack. I can't believe I didn't think of this before. I say, that, I say that a lot when I see some hacks. Roll up the label tightly. Put it on top of the yarn bobbin and slide up. Now you can keep the label with the yarn. I chose this hack because I reckon it is the perfect representation of everything a hack should be. It is simple, it is useful, and it makes me feel like a bit of an idiot for failing to think of it myself. But the whole point of this little series is to try these for myself. So that is what I'm going to do. I have actually pre-wound some yarn and the best place to probably show this off, well, it might be under the camera here. Yeah, that's not too bad. So I'll pop that on and let's just edge that up. I'm going to take a label. This is not the correct label. It's just one I found in the bin. 
and then I'm going to roll that up tightly. And then we're just going to pop that on the top and then pull the yarn off. And there is the label in the yarn. <laughs> and I think that is kind of brilliant because my go-to is usually try to jam the label in any of the yarn that I've wound up. And failing that, I will pin it to the yarn with like a bobby pin or even a stitch marker sometimes. But that is a neat little hack that I am very glad I came across and I will definitely be using from now often. And again, it's one of those ones that you just go, I can't believe I didn't think of that before. So that was a nice simple one to start us off. The second hack I chose because I've been making more and more clothes recently and I've most frequently been using double crochet to do that. And it kind of bothers me that the turning chain doesn't always look the nicest. And then I found hack number two. So let's watch it together. Are you annoyed by the gap at the beginning of your crochet rows? Yes, in some cases. Where do I put the stitch? Alternative, so single crochet. Then work in the left leg and single crochet again. And then keep, okay. Well, we can try that. So I have pre-prepared a little double crochet piece here and I've left the where I need to work my last stitch free and I'm better Better start recording that. Oh, damn it. I didn't press record properly. Okay, I'm going to press record now. I don't know why that didn't register. So I'm going to pull out all my work that I've just done. I'm going back to the original stitch. So we're at the end of the row. We're going to chain one, then turn our work, and we're going to single crochet into the first stitch single crochet then we're going to go into the left leg here and do a second single crochet nice so we've matched the height of our double crochet and now i'll just double crochet until the end of my little row here so looking at the piece there isn't a gap so you can see that here, there's no gap, which is really good. You can see the gap on this side of the turning chain. But to me, maybe keeping the edges straight is going to be an issue because it looks like it goes out a little bit. And I say that only having crocheted one row. So we might try it again. We will chain one, turn our work, single crochet in the first stitch, go back into the left leg, single crochet again. Now I'll just do a couple of double crochets here. Yeah, you know, that's not too bad. I think I'd have to try it in a larger project. For example, like some of the clothes I'm making to see like the overall effect. But all up, I'm going to give that a thumbs up because I think it could be pretty useful. And did, I think I forgot to give the first one a thumbs up. If that wasn't blatantly obvious, I give that one a thumbs up too. So that was hack number two. And I think, yeah, that's handy for eliminating that space when you do your turning chain. For hack number three, I've chosen something that I have seen all over the place for years, but I've never gotten around to attempting. So today is finally the day. I'm going to show you what hack number three is and you're all probably already familiar with it. Most of you have probably tried it, but I still have not. So hack number three is, so step one is to line up my yarn. And the reason I'm interested in, or have been interested in trying this is really just to see how well it works. Is it sort of as strong as, you know, purported? But we will find out here today. So line, line those up. Make sure I hit record. And then the next step is take my yarn here. Pass it over, pass it under, pass it over. So I have a little loop. 
pass it through. And then tighten. And then I think we just trim away the excess yarn here. And there we go. And I'm just going to tug on this to see if it stays together. So nice. All right, that worked really well. And I can't believe I put it off so long because it only took probably, what, a minute? Thumbs up. Next up is hack number four. And for this one, I've also chosen a hack that I can use in my clothes crocheting adventures from now on. And it is how to crochet a twisted fringe. So stitch, pull up, and then twist. Hold it. As you can see, they're making a nice, neat fringe. And I'm going to need a fringe for a particular item of clothing that I'm working on. So I thought this would be good to try. I've grabbed myself a bit of scrap yarn here. And oh, I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to undo my magic knot because I need the yarn. All that work for nothing. What, what should I do? Blue or yellow? They both go kind of well with orange, don't they? Mm, yellow. And let's just join that. I might bring you guys back out a little bit further for this one. And then I'm going to pull up. And I think it said there you twist four times for every inch. But I don't do inches. I do centimeters, millimeters. So that's just over 10 centimeters. You know what? There's inches on the other side of this, so I might go out to four inches. And then we know to spin it 16 times. And 16. Then they brought this down, I think. And then was it a single crochet or a slip stitch into back into here. You know what, I'm just gonna do a slip stitch. So I'm supposed to be holding that with my thumb. Yeah, I don't think I did that correctly, but it's not wound quite as tightly as those in the video, but it doesn't look too bad. Then again, it's just the first one I've made. I need to get the, the technique down will pull up to what I'm just guesstimating is four inches and then I'll spin. And 16, there's my final spin. But this time I need to try and hold it in place. So I'm holding it with my thumb. I need to work back into there. And then let it go. I think that one looks a little bit neater. Yeah, it does. It's not quite as loose. And I do think with some of these hacks, well, the ones that aren't hacks, they're more just crochet sort of techniques. You need to do it a few times to get the hang of it. Like last time I did what you guys all informed me was the, the pseudo crab stitch where you would sort of single crochet but twist the hook. Um, after you did the first yarn over pull through and I, I eventually got the hang of that. It just took a little bit. You need to you need to practice these things. So I just single crocheted there where I wasn't supposed to. This would be really handy if I was one of those people who could do the um, the pen spin trick with your with your fingers, but I've never been able to do that. Oh shit. I lost count. Oh well, I'll do two more and two and then I'll bring that down, hold on to it with my thumb and go back into the stitch. Whoops, I wasn't supposed to let go of that. Anyway. 
and there is little tassel number three. So I think I spun that one a few more times than I should have. But I think that would look good. Again, once I practiced enough to get consistent at it, I think that would look nice as a fringe on an item of clothing, which is what I'm planning to use it for. But yeah, thumbs up for that one as well. The next hack is one that I thought we have a visitor. Come on, come on, come say hello. Come say hello. This is Jasper. <laughs> don't let me. He's only been adopted in the last few months, so. <laughs> good boy, you stay there. You stay there, good boy. Hey, good boy. You go on your bed. Go on your bed. Go get your toys. What's your toys? Hack five is one that I thought would be good for those of us who don't have or can't afford, you know, the big, the fancy yarn bowls. Don't knock the table. Don't knock the table. So put your yarn in a bowl and then feed it through a bulldog clip. Oh, you tired boy. Are you a tired puppy boy? Really basic, only two things you need, well three including the yarn, but a bowl and a bulldog clip. So I have a, a bowl full of bulldog clips because I don't know if size is going to make a difference. I think that might be a bit too big. Let's get this one going too. Hey Jasp, hey Jasp. So we've got this size here, then I got another size down another size down again and then another size down from there i'm thinking i might try this one the third one i've also oh, jess what are you doing what are you doing puppy boy in the interest of experimentation i've got three kinds of yarn or yarn wound three ways i've got one in a ball i've got one in you know the skein you get from the the craft store and I'm also going to be using the yarn that I wound before. We're going to try these one at a time just to see how they go. I have used like bowls to hold my yarn. In fact, I used, where is it? Here it is. I've used this to hold my yarn in the past and I used it because it's tall because the problem that I have found with bowls is that the yarn can bounce around and sometimes it'll just bounce straight out of the bowl but maybe the bulldog clip is to negate that. Who knows? So I'm gonna pop that on the edge of the bowl here. Oh, which one should we try first? Let's try the big one. So first the back, then the front, and then put you there. I'm just gonna pull on it. Maybe if you had a heavier bowl, because this, it's glass, but it's not that heavy. Let's keep it in place, but so far, it's, it's not bad, but it's not great either. That's enough of that one. So for that one, I'd probably give it a an in-between. It worked okay, but as I said, it wasn't the greatest. Let's try the regular skein so pop you in and this is the type of skein that I've had issues with the bouncing in the past I put it in a bowl and give it a few few tugs on the yarn and it just bounced straight out I don't know what that noise was that's not a bouncing noise and this is working well at the moment but I think that's kind of cheating because I've wrapped the yarn around it so we'll get rid of all that and now now comes the real test You know what, that's, I was going to say that's working better than the first one, but I spoke too soon apparently. So again, we're running into some of the same issues. And like, I don't know if those issues are compounded by the fact that this bowl is just not very heavy at all. But once again, I'd probably give it an in-between because it works okay. You could, you could use this in place of a yarn bowl. Now I'm going to have to wind all these up again. We'll pop our third yarn in there, feed it through, and start pulling. Uh, that, that definitely works the best. That is the best of the three, which in honesty, I kind of expected. But yeah, if you've got some yarn that you've wound, you can definitely use this technique. But for the other three, 
I would say it's still it's still a viable option. You can still do it. You just might have to stop occasionally to, you know, sort some stuff out. If you're looking for some other options, some things that I've done or used rather as yarn holders in the past include old saucepans because you can put the lid on and you know that little hole in the top where like the steam can escape? You can feed your yarn up through that and just pull that. That worked pretty well, as well as old teapots. So you put the yarn in the teapot and feed the end of the yarn up through the spout and then pull it through there. If you don't want to go with the bowl and bulldog clip option, there's a couple more for you. We're up to hack number six now, and I picked this one because this is something that it drives me nuts when it happens and I want to know if the same is true for any of you. So we're going to watch this one and I would like to find a solution to this problem that irks me. How to stop crochet hooks from squeaking. You just rub it in your hair apparently. I really hope this is a good solution because you know I got hair I can do that. Like we did earlier, in the interest of experimentation, we're going to try a few different methods. Here are some hooks I prepared earlier. All of these are from different projects and I worked on each of them just before. So I've got a 3.5 millimeter hook, four and a five, and they have all reached the point where they've started to squeak. And I absolutely hate that noise. And the issue I have with it is that no matter what you do, it seems to, once you've, once you've hit the squeaky point, you can clean it, but it still comes back after a few minutes. You need to give it a really good thorough wash to eliminate that squeak noise, at least for a, a few hours. So I'm hoping that this, this is something that works really well. I can just, if it starts to squeak, rub it in my hair and boom, problem solved. I'll try the hair one with the four millimeter hook because that is the, or it was the one that was squeaking the worst. With the 3.5, I'll just do uh, you know a quick clean on my clothes, which is you know my usual go-to. And with the five millimeter hook, I will wipe it down with an alcohol wipe, which is what I do sometimes. But I don't have these like all the time. I just use them for cleaning every now and then. And this isn't really something I'd like to rely on. They're not very sustainable, are they? So I'll just clean the five millimeter hook and then I'll pop that down and let that dry with the 3.5 I'm going to give that a thorough clean on my top here and then the four millimeter hook I'm going to rub into my hair all right I think she didn't rub it in there for very long okay all right, I've pre-prepared this little piece here. I'll just crochet one row with each of my hooks and we'll see if we can hear any squeaking. Um, I don't know what to do because my mic is here. <laughs> if I hear any squeaking, I'll bring it closer so you guys can hear too. No squeaking so far, but in my experience when I do this, that only lasts for a few minutes. And then the, the squeaking starts back up again. So I've only got 10 stitches across in this instance. And that's probably not going to be enough for the squeaking to resume. No squeak on the, the closed one. Uh, is this dry? Yeah, that's mostly dry. So let's see if the alcohol wipe worked. And again, I know from experience that this does, and it seems to last a little bit longer than any of the other methods that I've tried. Okay, all good there. Did 10 single crochet and not a single squeak to be heard. Now for the final contender and the one that the hack was actually about, the squeakiest hook of them all, the four millimeter. I'm going to chain one. And is there a squeak? No, no squeaking so far. Well, there you go. 10 single crochet completed and no squeak to be heard. So maybe rubbing your crochet hook through your hair 
is a viable option for getting rid of squeak. Maybe that's because of, I don't know, buildup of oils in your scalp, or perhaps just the friction of rubbing the hook through your hair removes dust and whatever other buildup on your hook. But for, well, 10 single crochet at least, that worked. If you have a tip or a trick, something you do to get rid of hook squeak, what is it? And generally, how long does it last after you perform that? How long can you go without any more squeaking after you do that? Because I would like to find the very best solution to this problem. <laughs> Let me know what it is down in the comments. Hack number seven is also hopefully a solution to something that often irritates me. Threading a needle. There are a few things more irritating, well, except maybe hook squeak, than when you're trying to thread a needle and it just won't go through and then all the, the threads split and then you get half of them through the needle and the half outside the needle. It's a pain in the ass. So hopefully this one works. Like with some of the others, we're going to try this three or four different times. I've got different size needles. So I've got a larger one here, then a medium sized one, and then a small one, and then a really tiny one. But this is a sewing, you can't see that. That's a sewing needle and I'm not going to put myself through trying to thread yarn through that. So we're going to use these three and I'll just bring, bring back in my faithful blue yarn here. And all she did was fold the yarn over like the body of the needle. I don't know, is that actually called the body of the needle? Does that have a specific name? We're going to then take that off. So we're pinching it underneath. We're going to take that off and then pass the pinch end through the eye of the needle and then pull that out. And as you can see, that was fairly easy, but it was also rather cheaty because this is a large needle. We're going to make our way down the needle sizes. So thumbs up for that one. And I think I've been completely forgetting to do thumbs up or thumbs down for the TikTok hacks this time around, but oh well. You can probably tell by my reaction whether it was a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Okay, we're going to do the same one with the second needle here. Pinch it, pull the needle out, and then thread it through. All right, that worked well. Very nice, pretty easy. And this one I think is going to be the biggest challenge because the eye is the smallest. We'll do the same thing. Fold it over, pinch it underneath, pull the needle out, and then it's, it's a little bit more difficult, which kind of expected because the eye is smaller, but, but it still worked. For comparison, I will try doing it the quote unquote normal way of just shoving it through the eye. Of course, of course it worked easier this time. It never does, but when I'm trying to demonstrate this hack, it works first go. Bloody hell. But yes, overall that one gets a thumbs up. If you can't get it to work first go with your smallest needle, do have a try at folding the yarn over the body of the needle and then passing that pinched end through the eye. It did work pretty well. <laughs> I can't believe that happened. The eighth and final hack that I have for you guys today is something that I will make in this video, but I will try it out in between when this video goes up and the next crochet hacks video that I make. That will probably make a little bit more sense once you see it. And this is this one's actually quite long, so I might just skip through it a little bit. So basically, you take a makeup sponge and you put a hole in it, shove a hole right in it, and then you push through an aluminium hook 
or sorry, YouTube tells me that most of the people who are watching are American, so I probably should say aluminum hook. Is that right? Aluminum. That's so weird. <laughs> aluminum. So push your aluminum <laughs> hook through the makeup sponge. And if you've crocheted with aluminum hooks before, which I did when I first started out because they're really cheap, you will know that they can get very uncomfortable very quickly. So this might be a nice cheap DIY solution for anyone out there who can't access or can't afford the, you know, the ergonomic handle hooks. My sister has given me one of her old makeup spongy thingies and to me that feels really squishy. I don't know if it would make a good grip but we're going to try it. So I need to find something that I can use to put a hole in this. I think a drill might be might be a bit OP but I'll see what sort of tools I can rustle up and I'm going to be putting in a five millimeter hook. I would have preferred to use a 3.5 millimeter or a four, but I couldn't find those. So I'm just gonna go with a five. I do use that just not as frequently as I use the other sizes. So that's those. Um, I need to go find a hole creating device and I'll be back in a minute. My hunting trip wasn't all that successful. The best things I could sort of come up with were a screwdriver and I actually have a temperature gauge for meat and that's got a fairly pointy end. So I'm going to try that first. I'm just going to shove that in there and try not to stab myself. Okay, well, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be, but the difficult part might be getting the, the hook itself through. So let's just... <laughs> widen this a bit and then shove the hook through now I think in the video uh, the person actually used two makeup sponges but I only have the one I'm not going to use my sister's good <laughs> good sponges she wouldn't thank me for that so I'm going to attempt to crochet with this one but as I mentioned just before, I'll do that between videos because I don't think I'll get the, the full measure of how well this works by just doing a few stitches here on camera. I really need to attempt something a little bit larger than that and that will take some time. That'll be my homework for next time. So make sure I don't lose that. Before we finish up here today though, I did have one last hack. I'm not going to attempt it. I just want to get your opinions of it because when I first saw it, my immediate thought was, nope, not doing that. <laughs> and I want to know if A, you would attempt this or B, if you have, does it actually work? And I might skip through this one a bit because again, it is a longer video. So you, she's popping the baps, baps, backs on, but the, they obviously can be a little bit difficult sometimes. So she's softening the plastic <laughs> by using the lighter. And then, but that's not the last thing she uses the lighter for. I'll skip ahead. So she's melting it down. I don't go back a little bit. Melting it down and then pressing it flat. To me, like maybe in a vacuum, that could be a good idea. But I would not risk putting fire near my almost completed amigurumi piece. I just would not do it. As for using it to soften up the plastic of the, the backs of the safety eyes, I wondered if perhaps putting them in hot or boiling water could have that same effect. If I dropped them in there, would that soften the plastic enough to make them go on a little bit easier? Haven't tried it, I'm just speculating here. And obviously it depends on what sort of temperatures that kind of plastic can stand. But yes, I for one, would not be letting fire anywhere near my amigurumi, especially if it was acrylic, because that shit might just melt. I don't know what the, the melting or burning point of acrylic yarn is, but I'm still not gonna risk it. What about you? Would, you, would any of you use this? Or if you have used it, was it effective? I, I'm probably not gonna change my mind, but if you think it was effective, well, more power to you, I guess. But no, no fire near my amigurumi, thank you. 
And that is going to be all I have for you today. I know this particular episode wasn't as crochet heavy. And if you noticed during some of the hacks I was doing, my hands are a little bit bruised. So they're kind of sore at the moment due to extenuating circumstances. So I haven't been able to crochet as much as I would like to. And so I just picked a few hacks here today that didn't rely quite so much on excessive amounts of crochet. But let me know what you thought of those hacks. Would you use any of them? Do you have different ways of doing some of those? Remember again, I want the best possible solution for the hook squeaking one. Please don't let me down because, oh, that noise. That is so painful, that noise. Anyway, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it, dislike it if you didn't, and I will see you guys next week with another video.